Hey, so I've had a lot of questions about keys and how to upgrade from a standard manual key to a remote key. So in this video, I'll go over the basics of how a key interfaces with your car so you can understand how to upgrade it. I'll then show you how I swap my old key for a new remote key at a low cost, and then with a bit more investment, how I managed to add and remove keys to and from my car. This video will feature my 2004 Polo 9N, but I believe this is broadly applicable to most VAG group cars from this era. Polo 9Ns came stock with either a standard key or a remote key. Both keys have a physical interface with your car, allowing access to your driver and passenger doors, tailgate, or ignition. This mechanical interaction also allows the user to interact with the car's convenience system, which is responsible for the car's central locking. Both keys also have an immobilizer chip, which is part of VW's start authorization or immobilizer system. The only unique aspect to the remote key is the onboard electronics allowing wireless communication to the car's convenience system. Your car's convenience system is managed by the convenience system control unit. As shown in the schematic, the system can be controlled by either physical interaction with the car's locks or remote. Only certain control units are capable of remote communication, so generally, you'll need to replace your control unit if you want to make your car compatible with remote keys. The immobilizer is a small transponder that's powered by a reader coil in the car's ignition. The transponder stores a unique password that authorizes a car's start. Unauthorized keys, even if they are a mechanical fit, will not start your car and attempting to start a car with an authorized transponder will kill the engine and throw a warning light. The immobilizer system can however be modified to add and remove compatible transponders with diagnostics like VCDS, as long as you know your car's secret key code or SKC. Let's start by covering a basic key swap. First off, you'll need a key. The OEM part number for VW's remote key for a 2004 era Polo is on screen, and you'll find plenty of generic models online. I ordered an off-brand one off Joom for 17.84 euro with no delivery cost. The remote communicates at 433 MHz, and I would bet any generic remote marked with this frequency and with an ID48 transponder will work for this upgrade. These keys will most likely come unbadged, but you can easily buy a badge later. Now that you have your key, let's tackle each interface to make the key work with the car. Primarily, you'll have the physical interface so that the key can interact with the locks and ignition. For this, you just have to get the key cut by a local locksmith, and for me, this cost me 30 euros. For the transponder immobilizer interface, you can simply swap your old transponder for the new one. Your old key's transponder is already paired to the car's ignition system, but moving it will mean your old key can no longer start your car. To swap the immobilizer, pry open your old key, remove the transponder, pry open the new key, and replace the transponder. Your new key can now do everything your old key could, bar the remote control, which is a new interface between the remote and your car. Your car's convenience system control unit is also probably not capable of remote access, but for this, you'll need to check the control unit's part number. The control unit is found under the driver's footwell. I'd recommend you unscrew this vent and remove it for easier access to the module. Then, the module can be slid out from its housing and unclipped. In my case, my original module pictured wasn't compatible, and I swapped it out for a compatible one off eBay. This swap requires no programming, but if you'd like to change the settings with respect to the locking and unlocking functions, you'll need VCDS. At this point you're all set, and you just need to pair the remote with a control unit. To do this, place your old key in the ignition and turn on the electronics, roll down the driver's side window, and close the driver's door. Next, use the new remote key to lock the car, and then press one of the keys on the key fob. In my case, this pairing was accompanied by an audible click from the car, and the remote was paired. Now I'm going to cover how to manage key adaptions with VCDS. This will allow you to add new keys or remove existing ones and pair new transponders to the car's ignition system. Let's pretend we have a new key again and cover how to manage each interface. You'll need a key, part number on screen, and as before, a generic model at 433 MHz with an ID48 transponder will do. For the physical interface, you'll have your new key cut to your previous key's specifications, and for the immobilizer, there's no need to modify the key. The new key will come with a new transponder, but we'll need to update the immobilizer system in your car 
such that the new key transponder is paired with the ignition system. Now to make any adaptations to your car's immobilizer system, in order to add a new transponder, you're going to need to know your car's SKC, or secret key code. I'm told this can be obtained from a brand dealer or may have been provided in information at the time of a car's purchase, but in my case, I don't know the SKC, so let's try and figure it out ourselves. Online, you'll find plenty of tools on how to determine your car's SKC, but in this video I'll cover the use of KW1281. The program is free and authored by Jimenez in 2020 to help retrieve SKCs from VAG Group cars using generic KKL cables. I've put a link in the description to a thread covering the program in more detail, and there's a download link therein. To run KW1281, you'll need to download the program and have a KKL cable set up with a COM port on your computer. If you already own a Rostec diagnostic cable like XUSB, K2 USB, or Hex USB CAN, you can download drivers to emulate a serial COM with these cables. Otherwise, you'll need to buy a generic one. In my case, my Hex V2 cable was not supported, so I bought a cheap KKL cable on Amazon for 17 euro, and this cable came with links to download drivers. If you already have a cable and you don't know what drivers you need, you can always open it up and check the USB to serial adapter chip and download a driver for that chip. With the cable and driver installed, you can check under device manager slash ports for the connection and note the COM port number. In my case, it's COM3. Now, plug in the cable to your car's OBD2 port and turn on the electronics. To run the program, open your command prompt and CD to the folder where the program is saved, and then run the program using the following syntax, making sure the COM port is correctly numbered. In my case, this only took a few seconds, and I retrieved a five-digit pin. With your SKC, you can now use diagnostics like VCDS to log in and adapt your ignition system. Open VCDS and under 17-instruments and login 11, enter your SKC. Next, open adaption-10 and go to channel 21. Here, you'll note that the car has two keys saved. For now, we'll wipe them both by setting the key counts to zero and saving. At this point, none of your keys will be recognized by the immobilizer system anymore. To now add all your keys back in, go under channel 21 and set the new value to however many keys you want to have, in my case, four. Next, you'll want to save and cycle all your keys through the ignition. Once your key is paired, the immobilizer will stop flashing and you can enter the next key. I'm gonna go back in the car, remove the first key, put in the second one, immobilizer stop flashing, put in the third key, immobilizer stopped flashing, and put in the last key. Immobilizer is no longer flashing. I double checked the pairing by turning on the car with each key. At this stage, we've obtained new remote keys, cut the keys so that they could physically interface with the car, and adapted the car's immobilizer system to work with the new transponders. As a last step, we still need to manage the remote interface between the new remote keys and the car. In the basic key swap part of the video, I covered how to manually pair this using a physical sequence in the driver store, but instead, I'll show you here how to pair it using VCDS. For this, open VCDS 46 Central Convenience and under Adaption-10, open the Remote Control Adaption from the drop-down menu. Set the new value for the number of remote keys you want to pair and press save. In my case, this was two remotes. Next, press the lock or unlock button on each key until you hear a faint click. This signifies that the key is paired. You can test this by switching off the car's ignition and locking and unlocking the car.